My name is Dr. Alan Duffy. I'm a research fellow and astronomer at Swinburne University. And I create baby universes on supercomputers. Uh, I do this to try and figure out how galaxies like our Milky Way grow and, and even formed. Right now, it's a bit of a mystery as to why the galaxies are there, wh why there's so many of them, why are they so big. Uh, one of the key ingredients appears to be a mysterious new type of mass that we call dark matter. We don't know what it is, but if we don't put it into our simulations, we just actually can't form a galaxy at all. Now, I'm aware that the dark matter is out there, but I would really love to know actually what it is. So to that end, I'm uh, helping with the world's first dark matter detector in the Southern Hemisphere. It's uh, called Sabre, and it will be based in the bottom of a gold mine in Stoll in Victoria. And we're desperately trying to find what this dark matter actually is. And when we do, we'll have suddenly discovered more about our universe than we had ever previously known. So technology in my role is absolutely key. I create these universes on powerful supercomputers. This is a room filled, humming with computers just like you might have at home, but maybe 10 or 100,000 of those. And on those supercomputers, you can watch galaxies grow. Now, behind me is one of my uh, favorite baby universes. It's uh, a few hundred million light years across. Each of those points of light are actually entire galaxies and strung between them, we see the dark matter filaments. All of this would not be possible without the latest in computational hardware. Astronomy is a social science. We are always communicating with each other. We're always swapping ideas, sometimes not so politely, sometimes very constructively. And that communication is made possible uh, through the internet, but also sharing of the data these data sets that stream down from the telescopes are terabytes in size. It's actually blowing our minds how we're going to get the data from the latest telescopes, including the Australian uh, Square Kilometre Array Pathfinder. It's nearly finished construction, uh, aiming in 2016. And at that point, there's going to be so much data pouring off this, we don't even know how to transfer it. It is going to be a beautiful problem to have, though because with those latest images, we'll be able to explore the very furthest reaches of the universe and hopefully figure out how you get a galaxy like a Milky Way. Most astronomers today will never actually go to the telescope that they're using for their science. Thanks to the internet, thanks to digital platforms, there's just no reason to go there and take those images yourself. You get it delivered to you. Even more than that, thanks to the amazing digital platforms that provide citizen scientists with these images, we can crowdsource tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people to help us analyze our data. If you don't save that, you'll never be able to go back and explore it again in a new way or ask different questions that people can explore those data sets for you. That means preserving it is fundamental, and it's fundamental to the process of science, which is all about repetition. If you can't repeat your experiment, it's not science. It was just a fluke. So what do you do when you delete that information, when you delete that data. 10 years from now, someone wants to recreate the observations that you made or the analysis that you performed, and the data's gone. It's not enough just to claim it now and write it up in a paper. You have to provide the data as well, and that means digital preservation is the key to science in the future. We try to store, we try to preserve as much information as we can in the hopes that the next generation will be able to ask better questions and, and, and explore that data in a better way than we can today. One of the key principles in science is that your data is shareable and understandable. And scientists are a little bit lazy. Uh, we're trying to focus on the discovery and we're desperately trying to make that right now. And we don't often think about how easy is this gonna be for the next generation of scientists a, a decade from now or even longer how easy is it going to be for them to read my data, to understand what this vast data set actually is? If we don't preempt and design the, um, the preservation of our data in a way that is flexible and easy to understand, then we risk entering essentially a digital dark age where there will just be this period of, of decades where 
all of the amazing discoveries and, and the data that made that possible just can't be read. That the storage medium has changed. We used to have floppy disks. I haven't seen a floppy disk uh, reader in like a decade. If someone were to give me that and tell me there was a Nobel Prize winning bit of research or, or data on that floppy disk, what could I do? <laughs> it would drive me nuts. But this is where we're at right now. And if we don't future-proof our data and build in preservation from the start, then very likely the next generation will be cursing us for not having made that extra bit of effort to make our data readable and preservable. Big institutions have a responsibility to store and make accessible the data as much as the discoveries themselves. And we're at a time where you don't just have to take my word for it as a scientist, you can explore the data and you can see how many galaxies are in the universe and you can make these measurements and check that we did it right. I'm not saying it's easy, but I'm definitely saying it's possible. And as the tools get better and thanks to the internet and all of the digital platforms that have been created, it's actually feasible that you go into a library and whereas before you might read a book about galaxy formation, now you could actually use my simulations and watch a galaxy grow in front of you, actually explore its properties and see how they change in time and different physics. That's all currently possible. Now, if it's practical or not, that's another issue because a book does not take as much storage as one of these simulations. This object behind me has a billion particles in it. The entire catalog is well into the terabytes. Right now, that's an extraordinary ask, but technology progresses so quickly that maybe for the next generation, this would be a trivial amount of data to analyze and it would be as simple as checking out a book at a library is to sit and explore it and find out for yourself exactly how galaxies form.